I stayed at two lodges uh, on the southern part uh, of Lake Malawi in the um, Maclea area, which is the most popular, the most touristy, uh, but fortunately this is a very quiet time of the year, so there weren't many tourists. Uh, Cape Maclear, Cape Maclear area. The first lodge I stayed at um, was Chembi, Eagle's Nest camping. They've got chalets, uh, but I chose to camp. And they have <clears throat> a magnificent site right on the beach, and it's a private beach, it's their beach, um, on the lake shore. Magnificent um, site right on the beach. But unfortunately, when I arrived, uh, that site was taken. And so up above that, without the beautiful view, there are another two or three sites. They were fine, and I stayed there for two nights. And I stayed for two nights um, in the anticipation that the people that were occupying the beachfront uh, site would be leaving. As it happened, they extended their stay uh, by another two days, and so I wasn't going to hang around then just to get that site. But very pleasant, has electricity, has water, um, and obviously that water comes from the lake. But um, Lake Malawi is reputed uh, to have Bilhazia, so not water you would want to drink fresh from, from the lake. I certainly drank it, but after it was boiled, I cooked with it. Uh, making coffee, that sort of thing, it was fine, I hope. Now here we have another police roadblock and normally you just drive through them, they don't seem to. I've only been stopped at one. And the question is always, in Zambia and Malawi, I found this interesting, it's only one question that you get asked. You're greeted, very friendly greeting, uh, and then you ask, where are you going? And I think if you said Timbuktu, the response would be the same. Enjoy your journey, have a safe journey further, and off you go. So I'm not, I'm not sure entirely what the, the roadblocks are for. It's possibly more of a local issue, I don't know. But certainly officials, very pleasant, very friendly. Everybody I found in Malawi is friendly. Um, it's really so nice to see. In South Africa, you don't always find friendly people at roadblocks. Anyway, as I was saying, Cape McClear, Chembi Eagle's Nest. Quite pleasant, but there's really only one campsite. Um, that if you can get that campsite, take it, and you will spend three, three, four days there very happily. It's a private beach, so you don't have people wandering past all the time. Um, you don't get harassed by people trying to sell you things. Um, but it's got a downside, and I found that when I moved to my next lodge, also camping, and that was Fat Monkey's Lodge, which is about, oh, 10 kilometers away, further north up the lake. Now, Fat Monkey's is again right on the beachfront. It is partitioned off with simply a wooden rail fence. Also within a village, so you've got noise all the time around you. Um, but the locals apparently 
certainly from the three days I was there, don't come in to the camping site. They don't come into the lodge area at all. So there are clearly some rules that have been agreed with the community there. But they walk past all the time. Um, but it's, it's, I didn't find it at all annoying or irritating. I really didn't because you are observing normal village life. People are friendly. The vast majority, if they walk past you, will wave and say, hi boss. Hi boss seems to be a common greeting here. Or it's just hello or hi. And occasionally, just a thumbs up, which is also, I found very normal in Malawi and in, in Zambia. But there's always a greeting, it's always friendly. Um, yeah, I feel very safe there. Um, if I'd been to told cold that there's village life all around you and there's, a, there's always talking and noise and music playing, I would have said, no, 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 this is the last place I want to go to. And if I was in the bush felt, that would be the case. But here, you can absorb the village life as it's happening around you. People going about their daily duties, fishing boats coming out, fishing boats coming in, people wandering around, washing being done, clothing being washed. It's village life and I, I found, found it very very interesting I enjoyed Fat Monkeys very much because you can see village life happening all around you see the women going out in the morning early just after sunrise as the fishing boats come in to go and collect fish these little silver fish I'm not sure what they are and <clears throat> they're caught in their thousands upon thousands. The women come from the village and buy the fish in bucket loads and then take it back to their homes and lay it out on racks to dry in the sun. Interesting watching that people coming down uh, to the lake. Yes, I was there over a weekend, a Saturday and a Sunday and a Monday. Uh, Saturday, uh, Saturday and Sunday, music was playing in the village um, until very late, but it was sufficiently far away as not to be doof, doof, doof in your head. Uh, so it didn't bother me at all. In fact, the noise did not bother me because this was authentic. It was village life. Uh, I was the guest, uh, so it didn't bother me. The most noise that bothered me was a fellow camper from South Africa, of course. But I, I thoroughly enjoyed Fat Monkeys, really enjoyed it. It has electricity. Uh, there was only one time that I became a little irritated and that was with children. I made the mistake when a whole bunch of little kids arrived on the first night, um, I made the mistake of handing out notebooks I, and pens. I don't want to give children sweets. Um, they probably are not used to getting sweets. And frankly, I, I'm not sure that one should give children sweets without the parents consent uh, that's just my personal view I just think it's wrong in a in a non-western culture where children are not used to eating sweets I don't think one should give it to them so I, I decided consciously always to carry small little notebooks and different colored pens with me and I'd give out a pen and a notebook <clears throat> to kids in this case, I've got very few left, so I only gave out three. And I asked these kids right in front, uh, on the beach, in front of the camping area, who was the oldest one? And it was a girl, I gave her a pink one, 
and asked, who's the youngest one? It was a little boy, gave him a blue one. And the last one I said, I'm just gonna throw it in the air and whoever catches it, gets it. I must say, I shouldn't have done that. I felt a little bit like Donald Trump throwing out, making America great again caps. Anyway, I only thought about it later. It was probably not an appropriate thing to do. Nevertheless, and of course, as a result of this, um, there was a lot of fighting because the kids that had got the notebooks, the other kids felt shouldn't have got the notebooks, and the kids that got the notebooks felt the other kids are bullying them, and so uh, anyway, it took a few minutes and that was, they sorted that out amongst themselves. But then, unfortunately, and this this is was the problem, um, they decided to stay. And, and they decided to sing me a song, which was lovely. <laughs> the song was, I can't help thinking, I thought at the time it was the most inappropriate song. Who let the dogs out? Woof, woof. And only later did I think about it. This is actually a wonderful song for children. Who let the dogs out? Woof, woof. So this was sung at me for a long time. Anyway, then as as the sun set, they all went off to their various homes. But it was a lovely experience. But then, of course, each day they would arrive at different times of the day in groups of kids, 15, 20 at a time. And then you would hear, hello, Hi, hello, and these little faces would peep through the fence. And of course then you know, if you respond, they're gonna be here for the next hour and demanding attention. So <clears throat> I just ignored them thereafter. And so you would have, hello, hello, for about five minutes and then they would get bored uh, and, and they would wander off. Now, that was at um, Fat Monkey's Lodge. As I say, Chembi Eagle's Nest is a private beach, so there are no locals that you see directly. Um, Fat Monkey's, as I say, I, I, I found it, I found it very enjoyable. So relaxed, it was wonderful. And the sunsets from either of the two lodges are absolutely magnificent. Uh, absolutely magnificent, directly over the water. The sun sinking into one of the three islands that are at Cape McClear. So, Both lodges have a security guard in the camping area at night. So you you are not concerned that you're going to be robbed, um, that people will break open, open your vehicle or steal your cooking stuff on the tables. Yeah, village life. Um, at fat, fat Monkeys. The lake is the center of life of the village and no doubt of all of the villages on the lake. Um, unfortunately, lots of litter in the lake. Lots of litter. But 
people wash their dishes in the lake, they wash their clothing in the, la in the lake, they bathe in the lake, and by that I don't mean let's go and take a dip, I mean washing your body with soap. <clears throat> but of course I think that's absolutely normal, the lake is there and it's part of their life. But it does make drinking the water uh, somewhat risky. The Bilhazia factor, uh, I understand, is real. I'm not sure how real, but um, that water can't be perfectly pure. Not with a village living so close to the lake. So I, I use the, the water, which is very clear. I use the water for cooking, and I used it for coffee. Once it's, once it's boiled, I'm sure it's okay. It cost me for camping at Fat Monkeys 8,000 kwacha a night, which converts to $8. And they call that a one to one exchange, which of course it isn't. But 1,000 kwacha, $1. 8,000 kwacha, $8. And it's, it's an easy way. Uh, of doing the conversion. So camping um, at Chembi Eagle's Nest was 10 US dollars a night. At Fat Monkeys it was 8 US dollars a night. Um, both relatively cheap I think. Electricity is there, but at um, Chembi they have a large generator which runs a lot of the time and they say it runs <coughs> when the national grid is not providing energy. And from my experience in this part of the world, electricity is is not something you expect all the time. It goes on, it goes off. It's a bit like South Africa, I suppose. And Chembi has their own generator, which is a lot of people in reviews I've read complained that it was very noisy and they couldn't sleep at night, etc. Um, I didn't find it noisy at all. It's there in the background, you're aware of it. Uh, frankly, I'd far rather have the noise and have electricity than not have electricity. Although I don't need electricity, it's always nice to keep my batteries charged up, keep the fridge running at minus 22. Um, I can charge, put a, a charger, a, a, a CTEC charger on my starter battery and everything is then just in top condition. That to me is, is useful if you're standing for two or three or four days. I don't then have to worry about parking in the sun. I don't need the solar panel. So yes, that was an advantage. Some people consider it a disadvantage uh, of Chembi. Fat Monkeys also has electricity, but it's off the national grid. They also have a generator but it's a small generator. You can hear it in the background. Uh, and they ask you to disconnect everything other than just camp lights uh, when the power goes off. Well, the power didn't go off <coughs> all that often at Fat Monkeys. Um, it went off sometimes during the night and you're not aware of it. And the next morning it's back on, but it wasn't a problem at all. So, but you do have electricity, which is good got water, although as I say, uh, not for drinking directly without boiling. Shade, uh, both sides had lots of shade. Uh, fat monkeys uh, was to my mind very much more pleasant because they are huge mango trees and you camp under these mango trees that cover virtually the entire camping area. There are table, tables and benches at each site, dustbins, 
lighting which comes on automatically at night which is really a security feature um, and as I say there seems to be some form of understanding with the local villagers they don't come into the lodge at all they walk by but won't come in which is good um, no doubt they have they recognize too and the benefits of tourists being at fat monkeys and therefore um, don't harass them uh, I saw at one stage all the kids had gathered again and were making a lot of noise um, and one of the staff from Fat Monkeys came out with a stick about so long and spoke to them um, I imagine telling them to go away <laughs> which they did immediately I'm not sure if the stick um, did the work or his words did the work but a combination of the two clearly made it happen and off they went I enjoyed my time both at Chembi and Fat Monkeys I enjoyed Fat Monkeys more not because I didn't have the prime sites on the beach necessarily but it I found it very interesting seeing village life and the interaction of people in this the most simple of communities so that was rewarding and enjoyable and the friendliness of the people uh, was lovely to see while at uh, fat monkeys I took one of these tours I don't normally do the tours um, I really don't want to see a museum or anything else um, but they had a boat trip which takes you to a, an island just off Cape McClear um, where there are fish eagles and they they feed the fish eagles they throw fish into the lake and I, I really wanted to see that um, one of my bucket list photographs that I've never yet got uh, would be a fish eagle diving into the water and grabbing the fish and the shot of it as it grabs the fish and then you also go to see the blue fish um, they also feed these little blue fish and many other uh, of the the lake endemic lake species uh -huh. and they feed them with bread so these two things you can do you can also do snorkeling uh, I didn't particularly want to do snor snorkeling but I really wanted to see the feeding of the fish eagles and I'm very glad I did it uh, it's quite expensive for probably a, I asked them how long how long could this tour last they said as long as you wanted to yeah. anyway it lasted about I would say an hour and a half and it cost rand equivalent about 800 rand but I think it was worth it I think it was worth seeing the fish eagles now if it was just throwing fish into the lake and the fish fish eagle will come pick up the fish fly into a tree and eat it that would be one thing that would be enough but what made this so unique you go out on this boat and you cross an area of the lake oh I, I'm not good at judging distance but it's probably a couple of, of kilometers to uh, the island there are th three islands this is the closest island and that's where the fish eagles live 
And the fish eagles come into the mainland. I saw them on every morning that I, I was there. They'll come in at night, they'll fly back. But what made this so special, these guys, it's the boat's driver, pilot, and a tour guide. Who thank goodness wasn't, didn't play tour guide with me. I don't, I, I, I don't like tour guides talking to me all the time, telling me stuff that I really don't need to know. He did some of it and then I just nodded my head and said, yes, yes. And he, he picked up, this guy's really, he's not interested in hard sell. So it was very pleasant. Both of them very nice guys. And I think they recognized that the fish eagles, when they saw my camera equipment, I think they recognized, this guy's here for the fish eagles. He's not here for conversation. And he's not here to learn a year about scuba diving or the history of the lake or anything like that. Fish eagles. Now, I made a very big mistake. I took my 500 mm lens. And I know from experience, it's, it's too much glass for the fish eagles. I know that I've done it before on a boat, not with fish eagles, but with um, seals. I think it was seals. It's too much glass, too much movement. It doesn't work. You can't, you can't track that bird and shoot at exactly the right time. I knew that. But anyway, took the 500 mm lens. I should have taken a 200 mm lens. Took the 500 mm lens. And got really poor shots. Not one of them grabbing the fish. A couple of usable shots of them flying away with the fish. But it wasn't all that important. I think the experience was so nice. And yeah, it's not just feeding the fish eagles. Each fish eagle has got a name. And they call them by their names because while I'm focusing here on shooting fish eagles, these two guys are shouting in the background. And I'm not sure what they're shouting and I'm thinking, well, maybe noise attracts the fish eagles. Doesn't make much sense. And then I asked them when, when it was all over, I said, what were you shouting at the fish eagles? Said, no, we were calling them. What, what were you saying to them? Oh, we were shouting their names. Each one has a name. Yeah, this lake is big. One was Mugabe. Uh, one was um, Gaddafi. Yes. One was yeah. Syria. I don't know who gave these names, and I don't know what the other names were. I was told all of them, but I can't remember. I only remember those three names. And of course, I don't know if you've got five fish eagles sitting in trees, and you're throwing fish into the lake, and you call Mugabe. I don't know if Mugabe is going to come and take the fish. For all I know, Syria came, and Gaddafi came. I, I, I don't know. But they use these names because they throw the fish into the water and nothing happens. The fish eagle just looks and then they start calling the name and then they do come. So absolutely fascinating. If, if it has any impact on the fish eagle or not, I don't know. But I think it's quite charming. I think they could have chosen better names though. I really do. Zuma? 